Welcome to Avangrove Charter Schools presentation about charter schools and how they're funded. We hope you'll gain an understanding of the role charter schools play in public education and the funding dilemmas they face. So, what exactly is a charter school? A charter school is an independent public school established and operated under a charter from a local school board. In our case, the local school board is Avangrove School District. In 1997, Act 22 established charter schools in the state of Pennsylvania, outlined the purpose and goals, and set forth a funding model. Charter schools are public schools of choice. Parents can choose to enroll or withdraw students at will. Charter schools are paid for by taxpayers and funded through the school district. Currently, there are three basic types of charter schools. Brick and mortar charter schools are authorized by a single school district and draw students primarily from that district. Regional brick and mortar charter schools are authorized by multiple school districts and draw students primarily from those districts. Cyber charter schools are online schools that the student attends from home. They are authorized by the Department of Education and draw students from anywhere in PA. Here are some interesting facts about Pennsylvania's charter schools. There are 160 brick and mortar charter schools in PA with about 100,000 students in them. There are over 40,000 students on charter school waiting lists. Charters educate 6% of the public school students in Pennsylvania, yet charter schools account for only 4% of educational spending. In 1997, Pennsylvania's charter school law was passed. The same funding model is still in place and is outdated. It's over 20 years old. Now that we know a bit about charter schools, let's take a look at why they were created. Charter schools were created to benefit students and taxpayers by giving them school choice. Why did Pennsylvania's taxpayers feel we needed char charter schools? They were created with the following goals in mind. To improve learning for our children, to explore innovative teaching methods, keeping curriculum fresh and current, to provide educational options for students and parents, to create more and better professional opportunities for teachers, and to increase teacher and school responsibility, as well as improve accountability. Charter schools offer an excellent alternative for taxpayers to see outstanding results for their children. They have the freedom to use innovative curriculum while adhering to federal and Pennsylvania Department of Education standards. Smaller class sizes and schools allow for focused, personalized attention to each student. They have a proven track record of academic rigor and regular progress assessments. Because they are usually smaller schools, charters can be more responsible, more responsive to meet the unique needs of students. It's more of a family atmosphere. The staff knows the students personally and are invested in their success. The result is an increased student performance and satisfaction with their learning experience. Charter schools are held accountable to the same laws as traditional public schools. They must comply with PA charter school and federal laws, policies, and case law, including IDEA, PA 504, Title VI, Title IX, McKinney Vento, No Child Left Behind, and FERPA. Just like traditional public schools, charters must satisfy Pennsylvania standards and assessments requirements. They're required to set forth meaningful strategies for parent and community involvement and accountability. They must maintain fiscal and administrative transparency. AGCS posts all of this information publicly on our website and they must provide at least 180 days or minimum hours of instruction, which is 990 hours for 7th to 12th grade and 900 hours for kindergarten to 6th grade. It's important to note that traditional public schools can actually provide less than 180 days by using Act 80 days for professional development. Charters cannot use Act 80 days, so students may actually receive more educational time at a charter school. Just like traditional public schools, charter schools cannot discriminate in student admissions, staff hiring, or operations, be sectarian in any operations, provide religious instruction, or display religious items. 
advocate unlawful behavior, select students based on test scores, or charge tuition. I'm sure you've heard some of the rumors floating around out there. Let's see if you can tell what's fact and what's fiction. Did you hear? Charter schools are private, for-profit, and operated by private entities. That's fiction. Charter schools are nonprofit entities required to follow the same laws and regulations as school districts. Did you hear they financially hurt school districts? Also not true. The school districts retain about 30% of the funding for each student that the charter school is educating. We'll go into this in detail later in the presentation. Charters has lost over $100 million in funding over the last five years. Did you hear charters harm the public school system? Not at all. Charters have proven to provide high quality academic opportunities to students, especially in locations where school districts are failing. Did you hear? They're not required to have certified teachers. This is a common misconception. No, just like st traditional public schools, charter schools are required to have certified teachers. As a matter of fact, last year, AGCS boasted a 96.8 highly qualified teacher rate. The other 3.2% were not considered highly qualified because PA does not offer praxis exams for teachers in certain arts and languages, so there's no certification. For example, there's no praxis or Chinese, which we do offer at, a at AGCS. Did you hear they don't offer special, special ed services? Yes, we do offer special ed services. They cannot and do not turn away students with disabilities. Did you hear? They don't have to do state standardized testing. Also untrue. Like all PA public schools, charters are required to administer the PSSAs and the Keystone exams. Did you hear they don't have to provide 180 days of instruction? As we mentioned earlier, charter schools must provide 180 days or 990 or 900 hours based on the grade level of instructional time and cannot use Act 80 professional development days as instructional days. Did you hear they receive more funding than they need? <laughs> we wish. Charter schools receive less funding than they need. On average, they receive only 70% of the funding that the school district receives. Did you hear they aren't required to follow the right to know law? Not true. Like all PA public schools, charters are required to follow and adhere to right to know law. AGCS posts all of the required information on our website. I hope we've helped dispel some of the myths surrounding charter schools. Let's talk about how they're funded. As I mentioned earlier, the funding model used today is 20 years old. This is how the funds flow to the school districts. Federal funding goes to the state's Department of Education. Local taxes are sent directly to the school district. The state then allocates federal and state funds to the school district. The state also provides certain state subsidies to the school district. The school district then allocates the federal, state, and local funding as well as limited state subsidies to the charter school. First, they deduct selected expenditures and calculate the average daily membership or ADM separately for regular ed and special ed to come up with a per student rate. It's important to note that this allocation is based on last year's spending at the school district, not the charter school spending. With this formula, the result is that the charter school receives only 70% of the funding that the district receives. Let's take a look or closer look at this calculation. PDE Form 363 is used to calculate the amount of funding allocated to the charter schools. You can download this form on the AGCS website if you'd like. It starts with the schools, so school district's budgeted expenditures from the previous year. Then they subtract up to 21 allowable deductions and come up with the separate totals for regular ed and special ed. We'll get into this in more detail later. 
Next, they divide the remaining amounts by the ADM of all district and charter school students, again, breaking out into regular and special ed rates. The result is the total amount per pupil that the charter school will receive. The funding amount varies from district to district, 52 to 80 percent of the cost per student for a district student, with the average being about 70 percent. The school district retains about 30 percent of the funding. Let's take a closer look at the 21 deductions. Several, several of these selected expenditure deductions are mandated by Pennsylvania statute and more have been added by the PDE. Some of these deductions make sense because they are programs the charter school may not offer, like non-public, adult education, and college programs. Others don't make sense because they include expenses charters do incur and that can be pretty substantial, like transportation services for special ed students, facilities acquisition, construction, and capital improvements, funds transfers, and financing uses. These deductions added by the PD are, the mo are mostly federal funds. Again, some of these make, up, make sense and others don't, such as pupil personnel, instructional staff, administration, operations and maintenance, and support services. There's one more important part of this formula. The per student rates are calculated separately for regular ed and special ed students. The special ed rate is, again, based on the school district's expenditures from last year, minus federal deductions, multiplied by the state average rate of 16%, divided by the special ed ADM, gives you the special ed services allocation. Add to that the regular ed student rate, and you have the total rate for a special ed student in a charter school. It's the sum of two parts, special ed services and the regular ed rate gives you the total rate for special ed students in the charter school. So that's how the money flows, federal to state, state to district, local to district, district less deductions to charter. In the past several years, significant subsidy eliminations were made. In the past five years, charter schools have lost over $100 million in funding. The school subsidy eliminations made only for charter schools include the state's portion of Social Security and Medicare and PSERS, the Public School Employees Retirement System or pension. The employer PSERS contribution was 50% funded by the state, but this funding was eliminated just for charter schools. It was paid at the it was paid at the actual annual contribution rate of 12.36%. So for AGCS, the first year, we had to bear the $720,000 expense with no funding. This increases about 4% each year, so this elimination has seriously negatively impacted AGCS. These are significant expenses that the charter schools now have to absorb. And if that's not enough, special education transportation costs are not funded. As a matter of fact, the school districts can even bill the charters for regular education transportation for these students. As pro and proposed legislation would not permit charter schools to have any kind of fund balance at the end of the year, but school districts can, regardless of funding source. So that's a lot to absorb. I hope you have a better understanding of exactly how the funding works for charter schools and why there needs to be reform. The question we've heard often and can't answer remains, why does a child in a public charter school not have the same rights as a child in a traditional public school regarding the share of taxpayer revenues applied to their education? To summarize, charter schools educate 6% of the students but only account for 4% of the expense. They provide innovative, personal, rigorous, flexible education for our students. Charters comply with the same laws, policies, standards, and assessment requirements 
as the traditional public schools. And they provide the same, if not more, educational time to students. Yet, charter schools receive only 70% of the per-student funding that traditional public schools receive due to unfair deductions. Charters receive funding based on rates that are determined by last year's school district expenses, not by actual charter school expenses, which are lower. Proposed legislation would not allow charter schools to retain any funding surplus at the end of the year, like school districts can. And now they have to carry the burden of employee, Social Security, Medicare, and PSERS funding that was cut for only charter schools. It's time to take a closer look at the inequities and outdated funding models in order to continue to provide our taxpayers with outstanding educational opportunities and choices for Pennsylvania students. We urge you to stay informed and to get involved with our state educational legislation and charter school funding reform. Thank you for your time and interest in our state's excellent charter schools.